Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. Last night, Anibal Sanchez electrified the crowd here at Comerica Park with a complete game one hitter. Today, the Twins will have to take on another top flight starter. Doug Fister will get the call for the hometown team. It's a beautiful afternoon for baseball here in the Motor City. Welcome to game three featuring the Tigers and the Minnesota Twins. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pepe alongside Ron Allen. Glad to have you with us. What a special night it was at the ballpark last night. Who knows? Today we might get another special moment here. Rod Duck Fister will get the call. We do know one thing. The Tigers staff really as a whole this year has been outstanding. No doubt about that. The Tigers have an outstanding offensive club, but make no mistake about it. Uh, the reason why they've gotten to the postseason the last couple of years is their starting rotation, and they're off to a spectacular start once again here in 2013. Lots of first and seconds as far as the ranks are concerned uh, for the Tigers on this graphic. Wins, strikeouts, quality starts, and also whip, and the ERA is outstanding as well. So the Tigers have a legitimate shot of getting back to the postseason again because their starters have been so good. All right, Tigers have won four straight, going for five in a row here this afternoon after a short break. We'll Send you the Call Sam Studios in Shannon Ogan. Coming up this afternoon, last night was a good reminder that at any time something special can happen at the ballpark. We'll see what memories await us today. Tigers Twins coming up next.
Last night, Anibal Sanchez, a one-hit complete game victory. Today, Doug Fister takes the field. The Tigers taking on the Twins. The Minnesota starting lineup presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Carol Maurer, Willingham at the top. Justin Morneau cleaning up. Colabello will get the start at DH. Then Parmalee, Ramirez, Escobar, and Florimone. And we are ready for baseball here this afternoon. First pitch in the ball game is in there for a strike. 0-1 on Jamie Carroll, who starts things off. Tigers with their win last night have won four straight. There's a bouncing ball to short. Peralta will backhand it. And Carroll is out, one gone. Doug Fister today is presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. His last outing was his roughest of the season. That was against the Texas Rangers. Four and two thirds for Doug in that outing. And he gave up five earned runs in that game. So he'll be looking to get back on track and keep this Minnesota Twins team reeling, which has dropped 10 straight. Joe Maurer is greeted by a chorus of boos, obviously, for breaking up the Sanchez no hitter last night. Three out of nine in the series for Maurer, and he looks at strike one. And Sanchez had struck out Maurer you know, twice in last night's game with breaking balls. Uh, he tried to get him again with another curveball, and that's the ball that was hit uh, back up the middle for a solid single. Maurer batting 337 for the year. Fister delivers another strike, and the count is 0 2. Lauer has an RBI in the series. Fister, as he normally does, working quickly. He's ahead, no balls, two strikes. And Maurer takes inside, made him move his feet, one and two. What a gorgeous afternoon here at the ballpark today. Plenty of sunshine, 65 degrees, our game time temp, and a whole lot of folks watching this one in downtown Detroit. Another great crowd. Here's the one two driven to right field Hunter is on the move he'll turn it's off the top of the wall bounces straight up and gone. They signal home run for Joe Maurer. It's a one out solo shot and Maurer has made it one nothing Minnesota. And now the boos are really going to come down for Maurer. Just his third homer of the year. Four straight fastballs to Maurer. And he had knocked him off the plate with the previous fastball. He thought he could get him again. And Maurer was looking for it. He turned on it and hit it out of here. At least that's uh, what the initial call was. Jim Leland coming out. They may look at this one again. It looked like it bounced straight up. Joe West is the crew chief. And the umpire is discussing it right now. Let's see if they go take a look at it. They have signaled initially it was signaled to Homer. And now Joe West comes trotting in. And they're going to convene all four umpires will. Here's another look. Question is, did it bounce up off the yellow line and hit that back railing? If it did, then it's a home run. But they will take a look at it now. So the home run is under review. And we'll see what the umpiring crew comes up with. It's the second time this year that a Minnesota Twins player has had one of their home runs reviewed. It happened to Ryan Domant earlier this year. It was in Boston. It's the yellow line. It's a matter of what it did after that. Well, you talk about a difficult call to make here. Straight up, yep, yeah, it looked like it hit the uh, yellow line and then bounced off the metal railing behind the wall. So I think they're probably going to uphold this. We'll see. And hopefully, the umpiring crew will get a. Uh, Multiple looks at it, good looks at it. How about Maurer on consecutive days breaking up a no hitter? Well, Joe Maurer's a special player. And he's a really good hitter. Uh, Robbins Cano may be uh, the only left handed hitter that could rival uh, what Maurer can do in that batter's box. 
Of course, Cano hit for more power. Sanchez had an eight and a third no hitter going last night. Fister had a third, but it was a no hitter nonetheless. Let's see if uh, this is any clearer here. There's the ball. I think that's a home run. Right? You know? Well, more than likely they won't change it right. because it, it's not uh, inconclusive. Yeah, and, and the call on the field was home run, so. Meanwhile, Maurer is waiting, and so is Fister. And the umpiring crew continues to take a look at it. Jim Leland came out, really didn't even have any words with the umpires. They convened by themselves to make sure they get this right. It usually doesn't take them this long uh, when they do go down and review a call. Yeah, you're right. So I'm wondering if uh, they're going to have trouble finding evidence to overturn this call. Well, and with some of the issues that the uh, umpires have had the last uh, few weeks or so, they're going to make sure when they come back out here. So as we wait, here is the Bernstein advantage scouting report on Joe Maurer, who has broken up three no hitters in the ninth inning. Of course, he did it to Sanchez last night. He also did it in 08 and in 2010. And every time that he does that, breaking up a no hitter, he hits the ball right back up the middle. That would be Joe Maurer. Let's see what they say. It's a home run. Uh, Joe West gives the call. Joe Maurer gets the homer, and it's one nothing Minnesota. There is nothing further to argue for Jim Leland. That's the third home run of the year here for Joe Maurer. It's going to bring up Josh Willingham. One nothing Minnesota has the early lead here. Willingham batting just 206. Twenty three home runs. He has hit a couple of home runs in this series. They both came in game one. And he takes strike one in Minnesota able to do something here today that they don't do very often. They're usually trailing uh, after the first inning not winning the first inning. A little bit outside that time one ball one strike. The Twins have given up a lot of first inning runs. 52 to be exact. They have now been outscored in the first inning of games 52 to 19. Tough to come back uh, from those types of deficits, especially when uh, you only have two guys in your lineup that have been consistent all year. A 2 1 pitch. Bounce foul 2 2 on Josh Willingham. Some funny splits though this year for Doug Fister, who usually is pretty good against right handed batters. The right handers are hitting 345 this year against Fister and left handers just a shade above 200. There has to be some kind of explanation for Well, this. I don't think the curveball has been as good a pitch uh, this year for him, and usually he uses that curveball to uh, the right handed hitters, but it hasn't been sharp all season. Therefore, uh, the number's way up for right handed batters. Ball high. 3 2 on Willingham. Twins have the 1 0 lead on the home run by Joe Maurer. Fister came into this one at 5 and 1. And the uh, Tigers are 6 and 3 in his nine starts so far this year. Justin Morneau waiting on deck. Now again, Fister with the 3 2. He lost him, ball four. Let's take a look at the Tigers' starting defense this afternoon. Dirk's in left. Don Kelly is back out in center field. Torrey Hunter had a night off last night, but he's back in right field. Prince at first. Omar and Fontan Peralta are up the middle. And Miggy is anchored over at third base, and Brian Pena getting the start this afternoon. He forms the battery with Mr. Fister, and the first pitch floats in for a strike on Justin Morneau. The walk to Willingham is just the tenth of the year for Fister, and that has come in 55 innings of work. 
Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball and a wave and a miss. And Tigers defenders in the infield. When Fister is on the mound, they know that they need to be on their toes because he throws tons of ground balls. And one of those ground balls would come in very handy right now. Tigers offense has been real consistent all year long. Driven to center field. That ball is going to get down, split the gap, and go all the way to the wall. This will get a run in. Willingham comes rumbling home. Morneau takes a turn, but holds up with an RBI double. And not a real good pitch there, especially on an 0-2 count uh, to a power hitter. And he throws a slow breaking ball, and Morneau stayed back just long enough. Had to hit that ball right back through a uh, right center. Actually, it may have been a changeup, but it was off speed, whatever it was. That scored Willingham with ease, so the walk has come around to score. Twins out to a 2 nothing lead, and Morneau now has his 32nd RBI. Here's Chris Calabello. Recently called up his first tour of duty in the big leagues. Calabello so far is 0 for 5, but his numbers at Rochester this year, really good. He earned uh, this call up. Fister's 1 0. Oh, it looked like he fooled Pena that time. Pena was sliding outside and had to reach back. And now Brian heads out to the mound. Yeah, they weren't on the same page when this pitch was thrown. And Pena was getting ready for a breaking ball. And of course, that was a fastball that he just happened to get glove on. And you could see his body starting to shift to the outside part of the plate, anticipating uh, the break on that last pitch. And even though it fooled Pena, that pitch was actually called a strike. <laughs> you don't see that ever, really. <laughs> it's fouled back out of play, one, two. Well, Fister so far in this game has thrown 20, most of them strikes. But the Twins have a man in scoring position and already two runs in. Here's the one two. Ooh, where was that? Two and two on Calabello. Home plate umpire today, Andy Fletcher. Let's see. As Mr. Foxtrack said that caught a lot of plate. Fisker wondering as well. That's fouled back out of play. Two and two on Colabello, who played for Team Italy this year in the World Baseball Classic and hit 333 with a couple of towering three run homers. He played with Jason Grilly then. We'll see Jason he on did. Monday. Yeah, they were teammates. Team Italy had some success early in that tournament. They had fun. Baseball in Italy is still growing. Swing and a miss. And he struck him out the old fashioned way that time. Two gone. First strikeout for Doug. A pretty nice two seam fastball there thrown to Calabello uh, to get him to swing over the top of it. It'll bring up Chris Parmalee. Twins trying to snap a 10 game losing streak. The longest current losing streak in Major League Baseball. Seattle has lost seven straight. Harmony two out of five in the series, batting just 207. The 0 1. Pena goes down to the knees to block it. One ball, one strike. Fouled off, and that runs it to one and two on Parmalee, who has hit a lot better on the road this year. 267 on the road, just a buck 48 at Target Field. Twins this year are nine and 13 on their home field. They've jumped out to a two nothing lead here today on the road. 
And the one two. Right back up the middle into center base hit. Morneau coming around third. He will score and Parmalee gets it done with a one two base hit to center field and it's three nothing. And Doug Fister came into action today struggling against the right handed batters but it's been uh, the left handers that have gotten him here so far in the first inning. Uh, first a solo shot by Maurer. A double by Morneau. And a change up there to Parmalee that's ripped uh, right back up the middle for the third run of the inning. 11th RBI this year for Parmalee. Here comes former Tiger Wilkin Ramirez. Shaky start for Fister so far. Ramirez hits 256. Starting out in center field in this one for the Twins. Here's the 0 1. Bouncing ball to third base. Cabrera gobbles that one up. They'll get the force. And will end the inning. But it's a good start for Minnesota. They score three times on three hits. Joe Mauer let it off with a home run. Tigers starting lineup today presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Andy Dirks back in the leadoff slot in left field followed by Hunter and then Cabrera. Fielder is at first base then Victor and Johnny Peralta. You've got Pena Infante Kelly at your bottom three and they will be matched up today against P.J. Walters of Minnesota. At 2012 12 starts excuse me 12 starts for P.J. Walters. He had one complete game two and five with an ERA that was over five and a half. He's got a fastball anywhere from 89 to 92. Couple different breaking balls and a really good changeup. Dirks Hunter Cabrera here in the Tigers first, and Andy looks at a strike one one. Walters, 28 years old, a native of Alabama, goes 6'4, 215. The one one offering popped up. Middle of the infield. They converge on it. Who will take it? It'll be the second baseman, Carroll, one gone. Tim Hortons will sponsor the starting defense for the Minnesota Twins today. Willingham, Ramirez, Armley in the outfield. And the infield left to right reads Escobar, Florabon, Carroll, Morneau. And Joe Maurer is the catcher today. Here's Torrey Hunter. Torrey has hit safely in five in a row. 313 batting average in there for a strike. Hunter got the night off last night and he looks at another strike going to you know what I thought was strange last night. And the fact that Torrey did not appear in that game as a defensive replacement. And real late. You know I never thought of that. That's a good point. I guess. As Hunter goes down swinging. 
It was a 6 nothing game, so perhaps that might have figured into it, but you're right, the no-hitter was going. Right, that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Two gone, here comes Cabrera. Miggy batting 388. He has homered, and he's knocked in five runs already in the series. Driven to left field on a line, base hit. Wasting little time. Cabrera now has an 11 game hitting streak. He is such a smart hitter. Uh, he just watched Walters throw fastball after fastball, two dirts, and a Tory Hunter. So he went up there looking for the first pitch fastball. And look at him clear the hits out of the way to get the bat head out in front of home plate and just drills that single to left field. He is a machine. Here is Prince Fielder. Prince had his five game hit streak snapped in last night's game. Although he did walk a couple of times and that means Fielder now leads the AL with 33 base on balls. Here's the 1 0. One ball and one strike on Fielder. Prince with 41 driven in. That's good for third in the American League. His running mate has gotten most of the headlines because of what Cabrera has done for most of the year. But Fielder having a solid start as well to this campaign. The 1 1. High pop up, shallow left center field. Florimone, the shortstop, calling and catching, and the inning is over. No runs and a hit. One left. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Dodge, the Dodge event is going on now. Come see what's new and get a great deal on a new Dodge vehicle. And by Kraft, 12 ounce individually wrapped sliced cheese makes something amazing. First pitch is hit on the ground and out is Escobar, 4 3, 1 gone. Pedro Florimone will step in. Fister gave up three runs on three hits in the first. They got the scoring rolling on the Maurer home run. And then Morno and Parmalee knocked in runs. Florimone started game one in the series, had to leave early with a sprained finger that he suffered to sliding into third base, but he's back out there in this one today. Came on as a replacement last night. That dives in for a strike 0 and 1. Florimone batting 250. A 
Back him out of there. One ball, one strike. Cabrera on the grass at third base defensively. Which will open up the left side of the infield to Tad. And he spins him out of there again, two and one. Fister at five and one with a three six two coming in. Ball low, three balls, one strike. Three runs, three hits, Minnesota. No runs, one hit, Detroit. We're in the second. And a great day for ball here in the Motor City. That's in there, a strike three and two. Florimond this year, pretty good numbers against Detroit. 368 versus Tigers pitching. 3 2 pitch. Tipped it into the glove for strike three. Second strikeout for Fister. Both of his strikeouts have come on fastballs. A nice little two seamer tailing away from uh, the left handed hitter, Florimond. How about this ballpark last night? Sanchez had this place jumping, didn't he? It was absolutely rocking from the seventh inning on. Carroll looks at strike one. Reminiscent really of uh, the no hitter that Verlander threw in this ballpark against the Milwaukee Brewers. When I mean, people started sensing it late in the game, they were on their feet. Sanchez was gracious after he lost the no hitter. There's a line drive to right. Torrey Hunter is there. It's going to be a 1 2 3 inning for Doug Fister. Nice rebound inning. Minnesota go Tigers indeed another big crowd here this afternoon and it'll be Victor Martinez to lead it off and Johnny Peralta and Brian Pena facing P.J. Walters first pitch grounded to the right side and out of the reach of Jamie Carroll and Victor has himself a leadoff hit. As we do every game, we remind you to vote for your Tigers McDonald's player of the game presented by the new Detroit Tigers Eminem McFlurry only in McDonald's using your cell phone. Text Tigers then a space then the players uniform number to three seven three three eight. A nice effort here by Carroll. Who dives and the ball goes right underneath. The outstretched glove. Now Johnny Peralta. You were touching on this a little bit last night Rod I think it was last night we're talking about how Cabrera has stolen all the headlines and it's kind of overshadowed some of the years that other Tigers have had including Peralta. No question about that he checks in with 327 
a batting average, four homers, 20 ribbies. Very few, if any, shortstops are having the kind of offensive season uh, so far this year that Peralta is having. Well, the last time I checked, I think only Jed Lowry had a, a higher batting average. I'm not sure that's the case anymore because Johnny's up to 327. Tigers have the leadoff single here in the second. Ball high. But, you know, you look at what Dirks is starting to do and you look at what Fielder has done and what Peralta and Fonte have done. This has become a deep lineup that leads the American League in hits. Here's the one two. Yeah, on his hands and he fouled it back and Johnny pretty stable at that shortstop position too. Not very flashy but he is really consistent. Whatever he gets to he catches. And for the most part he throws accurately across the diamond. Only three errors committed so far for the Tiger shortstop. Watching some of the highlights of some other games last night. I saw a play that Alcides Escobar made of the Kansas City Royals. He went deep to the hole. He was flying all over the place and you know, threw a one hopper to first. They got the out. And I thought to myself, you know, it's a play that Peralta probably wouldn't make, but the one thing he will do is catch everything hit straight at him. And Jim Leland said, if I get a ground ball in the ninth inning, I want it to hit to Johnny Peralta. Not very flashy or as flashy as some other guys, but consistent. It's a ground ball to second. This is looking like a 4 6 3. And it is. Two gone. Walters gets himself a ground ball double play. Nice feed here by Carroll to the shortstop floor moan. And Victor Martinez had to peel out of the way because there was no way that he was going to get there and to break up two. Here is Brian Pena. Along with the other ancillary parts that have done well in the lineup, some of the backups have really stepped up too, like Pena, like Tuiasa Sopo. That's how you have a championship season. And when you get guys that are chipping in and playing the way that Peralta and Infante are playing up the middle, you have Torrey Hunter who's playing really well in right. You mentioned Pena. When you start to get your backup players and some of your starters performing the way they're performing, that's when you get into the postseason. And of course, their goal is to win a championship. Kelly, homer to the ball game last night, had a game winning hit earlier this year in Houston in the extra innings. Tuyasa Sopo has chipped in nicely. And the big thing is, Jim continues to keep them all involved. And really the only one that hasn't gotten much playing time is Santiago. Two and two. Right back up the middle. Boy, Pena having himself a really nice start offensively this year. He got himself a breaking ball there from P.J. Walters, and it was sitting on a tee. And just a really nice, easy stroke right back up the middle. Walters has three different breaking balls. He has that real slow one like that. He has a little tighter one and one even tighter than that. That of course the velocity increases with each one of those. Tigers have their third hits of the afternoon. It comes with two outs here in the second. Here's Infante. Strike one on Omar. Infante's on base percentage in the month of May is 373. And he is hitting a solid 321 overall. The 0 1. One ball and one strike. Walters is taking Vance Worley's spot in the rotation. Worley was sent down, he was their opening day starter. And PJ up from the minor leagues where he was 4 and 2, getting the call here today. Missed it low. Minnesota Twins traded Ben Revere to the Philadelphia Phillies and they got Worley in return. They were hoping that he would be a little bit better than what he had displayed the first couple of months of the season. But he's not by himself, their entire pitching staff. The starters are struggling. That's a fair ball down the line. 
Pena's on his way to third base. Brookins will stop him there. It's a double for Omar Infante. Second and third with two outs. It's a fastball that tails inside to Omar. Omar turns on it right over the head of Escobar, the third baseman. And Willingham was able to get over there and prevent Pena from scoring. That's a wise decision by Tom Brookins of the third base coach to hold him up. Seventh double of the year for Infante. That'll bring up Don Kelly. And he takes ball one outside. Kelly hit a two run shot in the third inning last night, extending the Tiger lead to 5 0. Parmalee nearly made a great play on that homer that Don hit last night. It might have been the catch of the year had he hauled that one in. Kelly this year with six RBIs, one for five in the series, that home run that we just spoke of. Now the 1 0. Tigers next road trip both Don Kelly and Jim Leland will get a chance to go home. Uh, both players live well Jim and Don live in Pittsburgh in the offseason. And that's going to get by the catcher not far enough. Maurer ran it down. Pena thought about coming home and then he put on the brakes. Wise decision by Pena. Had he continued to come home he would have been out for the third out of the inning. It's good that you have this kind of anticipation, but he wisely got back to third base. This ball hit Kelly. Well, you know what? Initially, I thought it did. Ooh, it looked like it changed directions. But I'm sure Don would have taken his base. He's not a selfish player. Here's the 2 1. So now it's 3 and 1 on the number 9 hitter. Andy Dirks waiting on deck. Walter's got a double play here in the second, but has created more trouble with a single and a double. Ball four, load him up. First walk for PJ Walters. Rick Anderson coming out now, and all of a sudden this inning has got a little bit chippy for Minnesota. Two out, nobody on. It was a single by Pena, double by Infante, walk to Kelly. Here's today's high speed stat brought to you by Charter Internet and uh, Andy Dirks. Talk about leading the way. 348 batting average when leading off this year with a couple of homers, a couple of doubles, and eight runs scored. And uh, that's one of the reasons why Jackson getting all the time that he needs to heal that left hamstring because they've had some guys like Infante and Dirks step up in Jackson's absence. So now an opportunity with the tying runs on the bases. Dirks popped up. Back in the first. And a breaking ball strike. Three runs, three hits, Minnesota. No runs, four hits for the Tigers. Wave and a miss. And it's 0 2 now. Two different breaking balls to start Andy Dirks off with two different speeds by Walters. Swing and a miss to strike him out, and Walters pitches out of a mess. He strikes out Dirks on three pitches, and that'll be his second strikeout of the game. Tigers lead him loaded. You're watching Tigers baseball today, presented by Bell Tire.
On top, 3 0 is our score as Doug Fister heads back to the mound. And of course, we're celebrating the uh, anniversary of the 68 World Series team. John Warden has joined us in the booth now, and it's always a pleasure to have John. And you had us in stitches before we even went on the air. That is one of your strengths. But I know this has been a really, really exciting day for you and your teammates. And uh, I think, in my mind, it's great for the Tigers organization to reconnect with their past. It is so important, especially. The teams that meant so much to the city, John. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Uh, I travel around. I live down in the Cincinnati area, but I had a gentleman one day come up to me, and I had a tiger hat on in Cincinnati, and he came over and he had a couple young guys with him. It was like he's turning over the business, you know. And he mm -hmm. goes, Why are you wearing the tiger hat? I said, Well, I'm just a big fan. My wife says, No, tell him you played. I said, Well, actually, I was on the 68 team. This guy put his hand out and said, Thanks for saving our city. Really? And that, that kills you, man. I mean, yeah. wow. There's a bouncing ball back up the middle and a base hit for guess who Joe Maurer who leads off the third with a single John. How do you get Joe Maurer out? Uh, <laughs> low and behind him and up and away. <laughs> <laughs> well John you touched down on how important that 68 team was not only you know for the baseball fans but for the city especially with what happened in 67 with the race rides here in Detroit. Right. Talk about that aspect of winning the championship. Well everything that happened in 67 and then. What magnified it and almost rekindled the fire was in 68. You know, I make the club about the last week. I'm a nobody, two years of A ball, and so I make the club, and Martin Luther King gets assassinated. You know, and Vietnam's cranking like right. crazy, and you're going, holy cow. So I make the team, they delay the season, and then so we leave and we fly to Detroit. They drop us off at Michigan and Trumbull. Daryl Patterson, myself, and Les Kane are single. You know, neither the club. We didn't know what all the wise came, picked the guys up. Les Kane went with Earl Wilson. He said, I got Les. There's a soft liner to right, base hit. Maurer will head to second and pull in there. And uh, Patterson and I are standing on the sidewalk by ourselves. You know, it's curfew. Wow. There's no, this is the fourth largest city in America at that time. No cars, no people. Here comes a cop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Jumped on the, he goes, What are you guys doing? I said, we're at the Tigers. What's your name? John Warden, Daryl Patterson. Get in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting arrested first day in town. You should have said Mickey Lola, John K. Line. Yeah, you K -Line. probably was taking care of you, though, wasn't he? We'd had a parade if they didn't I'd have said Lola and K Line, except he would have known. Then I was lying to him. But uh, just to see this city, no people. You know, just yeah, just really. We lose opening day. We win the next nine in a row. And on May 10th, we were in first place from then on out. And you just knew, nobody said it, but you knew. This is the, the karma and the, the mojo is working, man. And it looks like Fister got himself a double play. He does, 3 6 yeah. 1. What are some of the performances, uh, John, that stuck out in your mind from that 68 season? Well, you know, K Line missed five weeks. And when you miss a Hall of Famer, it, it's amazing. But, it, uh, you know, Willie Horton hit some balls. The, it's a you know unbelievable Mickey Stanley in center field and they showed the catch he made in Chicago and Comiskey just uh, Mickey had such great instincts and uh, McAuliffe here's how important McAuliffe was to me he had to fight with Tommy John in Tiger Stadium he gets suspended for four games we go to New York for four games we lost every game by one run and I always felt Mac was sort of the catalyst of that team because we weren't a running team we were definitely a three run homer team but then just to watch Denny pitch, oh my golly. Right. Hour 59, two minutes, eight, you know, two hours, nine minutes. Well, apparently we had an interference call down at second base, and Ron Gardenhire is arguing it. And uh, he's doing it very uh, feverishly as well. And there he goes. He's been thrown out by Joe West. You kind of had the feeling that was coming. Well, Joe West basically told him, well, you better get back to the dugout. If yeah. not, I'm going to talk to you. And apparently, Garden Hire knew as much. But you know, frustration uh, has probably set in as far as uh, Garden Hire is concerned because of the fact they've lost 10 straight. I can't uh, see what Willingham did here, to be honest with you. Looks like he slid straight through. But well, as a rule of thumb, you know, you have to be able to touch the base with yeah. some part of your body. And to me, it looks like if Willingham reaches down with the left hand, he could touch yeah. second base, and that's why uh, Gardenhire was so upset. Rod, I agree with you 100% on that, and and I think Gardenhire had a point here. Yeah, I think he did too. I mean, obviously there's intent uh, from Willingham to take out Johnny Peralta. I mean, he slides away from the base, but he still could have 
reached down and touched to second base with the left hand. Joe West didn't think so. Here is Calabello now with two outs. And a ball outside. I talked to Gardenhire when I was down on the field and he said he'd probably get kicked out the third inning and he'd go have a beer with me. <laughs> so he's right on cue, man. <laughs> One ball and no strikes on Calabello. And he fouls it off. One and one the count. What else sticks out about that 68 team? Obviously, when you get there, you're down 3 1 and uh, People pretty much had you written off. Yeah, you know our, our locker room was loose. You know, Cash is walking around cracking jokes, and he had he had about six bats he's carrying around, and hey, let's go get him, you know. And then, of course, Mayo Smith made some of the craziest moves in, right. in, in baseball history. Stanley the shortstop, but he lets Lovich bat. We're down three games to one, and lets him hit in the in the fifth game. Oh, come on, Mayo. <laughs> he ducked, you know, one in the right field, a little. <laughs> Like that, all of a sudden, and Stanley McCall of Kayla, boom, boom, boom. We win 5 3. We go back to St. Louis. 10 run third inning, still holds a record. Uh, Northrop Grand Slam. And then we go to game seven, and Mayo said something to. Uh... Go ahead, finish your thought. May Mayo said something to Lowitz about, Mick, I might need you in the seventh game. He goes, Oh, right, I'll get down the bullpen. He goes, No, I want you to start. Lowe's goes, really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, we appreciate it. Best of luck. Thanks, Thanks for pal. stopping in. All yeah, right. You bet. Thanks for having me. Tigers down 3 nothing this afternoon as we go to the bottom of the third here at Comerica Park on a day where we celebrate the anniversary of the 68 World Championship Tigers. Many of them were at the ballpark earlier today for the ceremony. John Warden is one of the funniest men I know. Yep. We he just got a is handful there. funny. There's a bouncing ball left side knocked down by Escobar but he still has time. One out here in the Tiger third. No panic here by Escobar. Yeah, mishandles it, but quickly finds out where the ball is, bare hands it, and still able to get uh, Tory Hunter by a pretty good margin. Cabrera fouls one back out of play. Miguel Cabrera. It has swung at the first two pitches here. First time up singling into a left field, but he's hitting about 400 this year uh, when he does swing at the first pitch. So how do you get him out when he swings at the first pitch? He's over 400. When he's got two strikes on him, he's up over 400. I mean, what do you do with this guy? Throw it down the middle and hope. I don't know. I mean, it, it's uh, it's probably a situation where you just you can't do a whole lot. There's a pretty good play behind the bag by Escobar. And he throws him out. Two gone while we have a chance to the studio we go. Here's Shannon Hogan. Right. 
Shannon, thanks. Prince Fielder now will stand in. And Tigers came into play with a half game lead over the uh, Cleveland Indians this afternoon. Tigers trying to win their fifth consecutive game today. They're now 15 and 7 here at home. Prince Hammers won to center. Wilkin Ramirez cruising back. And it's going to be a 1 2 3 inning for PJ Walters. A three nothing lead. Some young Tigers fans enjoying themselves. Another big crowd here this afternoon. Twins got on the board early. They scored all three of their runs in the first inning. And as we travel to the fourth now, Parmalee will lead it off. It's one of those standing room only days here at the yard. They got here early today, too. I mean, they were standing out there about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Gates opened up at 2 today with the. Celebration pregame. I guess those are the first come first serve out there, correct? I believe you're right. It's still, I mean, I know it's standing room, but it's still a great place to catch the ball game. I had a chance to do it back in 05 with the All Star game. It was kind of cruising out there with the kids, and it's uh, it's a great spot. Here's the 0 1. Really not a bad uh, seat in the house. People hanging out in K Line's corner. People everywhere. Here's the 1-1. One, one. one and two on Parmalee. If you're a player, you have to love this a kind of enthusiasm from your fans on a daily basis. Well, it's a major selling point, I would think, for the Tigers when it comes to free agency time. With luring players here. I mean, playing in front of 40,000 every night in the middle of the summer. I know that's what Tory Hunter said. He said he just loved coming here and, and seeing the passion from the fans. And when he became a free agent the last offseason, this was his first choice. Another foul ball. Skitter back into the seats. And sometimes your first choice may not be the club's first choice, but the feelings were mutual uh, regarding Tory. Parmalee singled one in back in the first one of the three RBIs in that first inning and that is pulled foul. Three runs five hits for Minnesota no runs four hits for Detroit. On deck Wilkin Ramirez. This is game three of what will be a four game series. Just off the plate. Fletcher thought about it but. Would not punch him out. Two and two.
Way outside. Three balls, two strikes now on Chris Parmalee. That's the pitch right there that Fisher just really hasn't been all that efficient with this year's the curveball. He has not been able to get to that consistent arm slot, which would allow that ball to have that real good downward action he's had first couple years in the Tigers uniform. Slice to left. Dirks runs it down. One out here in the fourth, which brings us to our AT&T trivia question. Which pitcher had the longest span between their first and second no hitter? Sanchez threw one as a rookie and nearly threw one last night came within two outs of doing that. Who had the longest span between their first and second no hitters? Ooh, look out down goes Ramirez as Fister hits yet another batter. That is number 11. Yeah, and he leads the lead. Here's that curveball. Just talked about it. For whatever reason, just not throwing that good curveball yet. And it's one of the reasons why right handed batters have kind of had their way against Doug Fister this year, hitting 345 uh, coming into the contest uh, this afternoon. One on, one out. Strike one on Eduardo Escobar. So Fister now is at least one batter in seven of his ten starts. One and one on Escobar. He bounced out back in the second 0 for 1. Joe Vabra, their third base coach, running through the signals. Wilkin Ramirez can run a little bit. We saw that in his days in a Tigers uniform. Although very briefly in a Tigers uniform, but his numbers in the minors were pretty good in that respect. Joe Vavra was the hitting coach last year for the Minnesota Twins, now the third base coach. Tom Bernanski taking over as the hitting coach this year. A lot of big shakeups in that Minnesota staff in the offseason. Really, the only two guys that stayed in place were Gardenhire and what, Rick Anderson. Right. And Bernanski, he had himself a really nice career. He had some pop in that bat. Classic uppercut swing for a right handed batter. Fouled away. Fister not missing many bats uh, so far here today, and he's already racked up uh, 65 total pitches. 29 of them came in that first inning. Missed inside two and two. Yeah, but if you're Fister, you'd know if you can just kind of keep the score right where it's at. Uh, sooner or later, the Tigers' offense will perk up and they will score uh, some runs here today against uh, the Minnesota Twins starter, Walters. Swing and a miss. And he finally gets Escobar. Two outs here in the fourth inning. Well, the Tigers battle the Minnesota Twins tomorrow. It's a 108 start. Sunday Kids Day. All kids receive a Tigers team baseball card set. For ticket information, call 866-66-TIGER. Get the youngsters out to the ballpark. It's Sunday Kids Day here tomorrow. Here's Pedro Florimone. Big swing there for Florimone. Good breaking ball there. 247 this year for the shortstop. Located beautifully down by that back foot of uh, Florimon. Now you see it, now you don't. The 0 1. It's one reason why the curveball is such an effective pitch for Doug because uh, he is so tall. He is one of the tallest pitchers in Major League Baseball and he's got a really 
long wingspan. So when he's throwing straight over the top, as a hitter, you basically see that curveball. It's like over your head when it starts. Florimone behind in the count now, one and two. He's got some life on his fastball today. Anywhere from 89 to 91, but it's moving all over the strike zone. Got him, strike three. Florimon punched out of there, and nothing comes of the hit batter. No runs, no hits, one man left, and we are headed to the bottom of the fourth on a sunny day here in the Motor City. Detroit is brought to you by Arby's. Try Arby's new King's Hawaiian Roast Beef Sandwich. Arby's slicing up freshness. And by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Back here in downtown Detroit, the Tigers find themselves down to the Twins. Three to nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Three runs, five hits, Minnesota. No runs, four hits for Detroit. P.J. Walters got him one, two, three in the third. And the first pitch is into Victor Martinez zone one and yeah, you can tell that uh, the game plan today for Walters was to come out and establish his fastball and he's done a very nice job of that. There's another strike and he quickly gets ahead 0 2 change up there at 79 even if you don't have an overpowering fastball if you locate it at the knees. And you're able to work the corners inside and outside you can have a success up here. Especially if you have a couple of secondary pitches to go along with that fastball. Oswaldo Arcia who started last night's game. An outfielder was sent down to make room for the right hander Walters on the 25 man roster. There's a ground ball hit to the right side and it's straight at the first baseman Morno. One out. Victor now one for two. It's going to bring up Johnny Peralta. The Minnesota Twins, by and large, this year are just aching for some consistent pitching. And so far, Walters has done a pretty good job here against a really good Tigers lineup. Well, Terry Ryan, there, the general manager, went out and made a couple of uh, trades in the offseason trying to bolster the staff. But well, the results uh, have not been good yet. No, Worley was sent down, their opening day starter. That's why Walters is here. There's the strike call. One and one. Rick Anderson's club has posted as a team an ERA of 4.71. Ground ball left side, short half scoop there by Escobar. Two gone. It's kind of hard to win when uh, your starters are posting these kind of numbers. 
And they're last in earned run average, opponents average, strikeouts. And they've allowed the most hits as well. It has been a revamped starting rotation, but Pelfrey's ERA is six and a half. Kevin Correa probably has uh, one of the better ERAs, 3.9, but most everybody else four and above. Brian Pena, the batter, and they play in a pretty good pitcher's park, right? Strike call. One one on Pena, who singled. It was back in the second after a double play ball. Walters has always pretty much been a strike machine. Uh, he's just like a lot of the Minnesota Twins pitchers of the past. He's filling up that strike zone with regularity. 51 pitches thrown, 35 strikes. And he's working as well at a brisk pace. The one two. Chopper hit to second. It'll flatten out for Carroll, but he stays with it. And the Tigers go one, two, three. We're headed to the fifth. Summary Joe Maurer came to the plate in the first inning and was booed and hit a solo shot and there were a couple of other hits in that first inning a double by more no which played in one and also Parmalee uh, got a base hit right back through the gut he also drove in one the Tigers trailing in this contest three to nothing going to the top half of the fifth inning and Doug Fister here in the fifth will have Jamie Carroll top of the order coming up it'll be Carroll Maurer Willingham. Fister had thrown 71 pitches so far through four innings. Walters, meanwhile, has thrown just 52. Almost 20 more for Doug in this game. Carroll, a fly ball and a ground out. Twins got all three of their runs in the first inning. And so far, they have held up. Ball one missing outside to Jamie Carroll. Carroll came into this game batting 283 in the leadoff slot. They had Aaron Hicks early in the season, the rookie batting leadoff. There's a breaking ball strike, make it 1 1. Jimmy Carroll, 39 years young, but getting a chance to play every single day because of some of the struggles of uh, some of the other infielders. And Carroll, for his part, has been really. Well, he's been very consistent defensively. He's gone 41 straight games now without an error. And he can play second, he can play third, he can play short. They say he's a pretty good leader in the clubhouse, too. He's taken a lot of the young players under their under his wing. And taught them how to go about their business on a daily basis in the major leagues. Two and two the count on Carroll. Off the plate, three and two. Well, here's our high speed pitch brought to you by Xfinity. 
Ninety one has been the top fastball by Doug Fister. And uh, one of those curveballs at 70 miles an hour. Right back to the mound and Fister who fields his position very well made a nice play. Once Doug delivers the ball home. He always gets himself in a pretty good position to make a play if the balls hit right back at him. For a guy that stands as tall as he stands. Really good agility around that mound. Here's Joe Maurer. Fister now has retired six of the last seven that he's faced. Maurer has had a big game. His home run was reviewed back in the first inning. They decided it was a long ball. And that last one bit Pena, the catcher. Joe Maurer also swinging at the first pitch. How about that? Very seldom does he. Joe's been using that bat right there for a while too. All pine tarred up, all nicked up. That bat's got a lot of hits in it. Bouncing ball right side. There's another hit. He is three for three. Well, you go back to last night, four for four. He got that hit in the ninth inning against Sanchez, which broke up the no hitter. And he usually doesn't get base hits to the pull field, but all three of his hits today have gone in that direction to the pull field. Twins now have six hits this afternoon. One out single by Mauer, and Willingham will stand in. Twins have gone down one, two, three only once in this game today. That was back in the second when Doug threw just nine pitches in that frame. One and zero on Willingham. Walk, single, run scored. Popped him up. Second baseman Infante to the grass. Willingham retired. Two outs here in the fifth. And Willingham upset with himself. He jammed himself. It was an 80 mile per hour changeup thrown here by Fister. And he gets out there with his body. And then his hands don't work efficiently. He collapses on that backside and no bat speed in that swing there for Willingham. Here's Morno. RBI doubled in the first inning. Ground ball to first right at the Prince and that'll take care of the Twins. No runs one hit one man left. We go to the bottom of the fifth here at Comerica time to get the bats going.
Trivia question again. Which pitcher had the longest span between their first and second no hitter? Sanchez almost threw another one last night. That would be Randy Johnson, who went 13 years, nearly 14 years between no hitters in 1990 and then in 2004. Sanchez threw one in his rookie season with the then Florida Marlins and very nearly had one last night. And Fonte gets it started off and he skies one in the air to left center, not deep. Wilkin Ramirez coming in. Chasing off the left fielder. One out. Well, here's a, uh, a list of the longest spans between no hitters. Ryan went eight years. He threw seven of them. Cy Young. Who's Ted Breitenstein? No idea. Or Breitenstein. Either way. I'm not afraid to admit I've never heard of him. And he's throwing a couple of no hitters. Don Kelly will stand in. Kelly had a walk back in the second. And Rick Anderson, the pitching coach of the Minnesota Twins, made a visit out to Walters a couple of innings ago. And since he made that visit, a long run and almost Willingham. Oh, oh, look out, Willingham. You got to pay for those seats. One and two. Great hustle here by Willingham. Nearly in that lady's lap. Just missed making a fabulous running catch. Look nice, out. nice gesture there by the fans holding him up. One and two. Well, he was either holding him up or he'd be sitting on their lap. No doubt. Just to finish that thought on uh, Walters uh, since that visit from Anderson the pitching coach lots of breaking balls. Uh, he was throwing lots of fastballs early. Fly ball center field. Death Valley out there Ramirez. Two gone and but the last couple of innings the majority of the pitches that he has thrown have been curveballs and changeups. And as a result he's been on quite a roll now. Rick Anderson there sitting with uh, last night's starter Samuel Duduno and uh, probably uh, talking about what Mr. Walters has done so far this evening because Duduno struggled a little bit last night's game. Right back up the middle and in the center field base hit another change up hit right off the end of the bat and by number 12 Andy Dirt. Walters had retired nine straight before that. Tigers have a two out base runner here in the fifth. And that was the Tigers fifth hit of the game. Torrey is 0 for 2 strikeout ground out. Fouled off 0 and 1. It's been a while since Torrey has hit a home run. In fact he has only one this year and that was back on April the 13th. So he remains two homers shy of 300 for his career. He clobbered that homer too, about 460 feet. Where did he hit that one? Do you remember? I'm trying to think. Hunter, that was at Oakland. Oh, Brett Anderson, I believe. Yeah, 413 at Oakland. It's all coming back to me now. Yep. That sparked that uh, conversation that you had with him about that's what it was. That's how right. far breaking balls go versus fastballs when you catch them just right. That ball's hit the center field pretty well. Ramirez on the run, still going, not going to get it. Up against the wall, it's a score run. Hunter takes the turn but holds with an RBI double. Good swing here put on the baseball by Torrey Hunter. He gets a fastball from Walters and drills it. Now Ramirez in center field took a wrong route initially. 
Uh, he came in on this ball, and because of that, he was not able to recover and catch that baseball. I don't know if he catches it anyway, but he didn't take a direct route to get there. Dirk scoring all the way from first. Hunter has his 22nd RBI. Now one swing of the bat could tie it up. Strike called 0 and 1. Three eighty nine for Miguel Cabrera a single and a ground out in this game. Way outside one ball and one strike now on Miguel. Three runs six hits Minnesota one run six hits for Detroit. Big swing there by Cabrera one and two. Over the top of the breaking ball. Outside, two balls, two strikes. Walters continues to work at a pretty brisk pace here. He has done good work against the Tigers despite this one run they've gotten here in the fifth. He had nine retired in a row. Prior to a single by Dirks and the double by Torrey. Stays away and the count goes three and two. He's had success against Miguel today with that breaking ball. He had him to swing over one earlier in this at bat. And the last time Miguel was up, he grounded out to the third baseman on a breaking ball. Well, you really don't have a lot of areas where you could pitch a Miguel Cabrera. And really, you have to go up against him, whether it be up and in or up and away, where he's hitting 143 and 182, respectively. Anything down the middle, inside, outside, belt buckle high or lower, uh, he's got really nice average on those pitches. Anything 300 and above constitutes a hot zone. Here's the sizzling then. <laughs> Sizzling zone. Swing and a miss. He got him that time. So the Tigers have to settle for one run on the RBI double by Tory Hunter. Five in the books here at the ballpark. Miller time later in today's game. It is brought to you by Miller Light. Torrey Hunter's RBI double has gotten the Tigers a run back. They're now down three to one. Doug Fister, 82 pitches in this game. We'll go to the mound here in the sixth. Chris Calabello will lead it off. 
0 and 1 on Calabello. Parmalee then Ramirez. Twins got all three of their runs in the first. They have not scored against Fisker since. They have six hits. The Tigers have six hits. Calabello is about an interesting story as you're going to find in Major League Baseball. He was originally signed by the Tigers. That was back in 2006, but the Tigers released him about three weeks into spring training. He went on to play seven years of independent baseball, just hoping for an opportunity. And the Twins have given him that opportunity. Played in the World Baseball Classic. For Team Italy, he spent part of his youth in Italy because his dad played professionally there. Here's the one two. Yet another example of how the road to the big leagues is just it varies. Seven years in independent ball. Seven seasons and, and he had obviously a lot of success so he continued to play but you know we're not talking about team affiliated minor leagues we're talking about independent ball. The 2 2 is outside. He is still looking for his first big league hit. He's 0 for 7. Boy, was he raking down a triple A. Fister has gone to five three ball counts. Chopper back up the middle. There is his first major league hit. Chris Calabello with a single to center field. Oh, we have a chance to the studio. We go. Game break time with Shannon Hogan. All right, Shannon, thanks. There it is, the first major league hit for Chris Calabello. All of a sudden, uh, the Angels are rolling a little bit out west. Seven straight, the offense starting to come alive a little bit for the Angels. You say ball outside, and I guess you could say it applies to every team, but their pitching will take them where they're going to get to. That's right. And they've had uh, Jared Weaver on the DL, but he's scheduled to come back soon. Harmony had a single that drove in a run back in the first. Good change up there by uh, Doug Fister in the 1 0 count. And that's exactly what the change up is designed to do keep the hitter off balance. That's in for a strike one and two on Chris Parmalee. Since I made that comment about Fister and really not commanding that breaking ball about the third inning, he's thrown some really good ones. He must have found that really good arm slot, which allows him to get on top and get that real good downward break on that pitch. Verlander found his curveball too in his last outing, which was encouraging. Fister now with 92 pitches and again he hadn't allowed anything since the three run first the Tigers bullpen in great shape today. Anibal Sanchez made sure of that. Ground ball second base Infante flips to Peralta that's going to be a double play. Omar Infante and Johnny Peralta boy they've been in sync all year long. Omar takes this ball off the dirt and really gives Peralta a really good overhand firm feed. Uh, which g gives Peralta plenty of time uh, to get the ball on its way to first base. Well, they had half of last season to play with each other, and now, of course, a month and a half into this year. And that has been a solid tandem up the middle. Wilkin Ramirez hits a ground ball foul. 0 oh 1 on Ramirez. His specialty this year has been pinch hitting. He said the most pinch hits on this Minnesota team, 11 of them. The 
steps out on Fister. That's a high number for an American League team this early in the season, but uh, they really have not had a lot of offensive performers. A lot of guys haven't really stepped up. Therefore, Wilkin uh, has to be fr pressed into duty on many nights by Ron Gardenhire. Oh, and two. Swing and a miss to strike him out. So Fister gets the double play and then fans Ramirez. We will go to the bottom of the sixth here in Detroit. Three to one ball game. Sixth, and it'll be Prince Fielder starting it off for Detroit. Fielder facing PJ Walters, who's just thrown his 70th pitch of the afternoon. Gave up an RBI double to Hunter in the fifth, and that has been it. The 28 year old out of Alabama. Prince looks at a ball high. The count goes to 2 0 on Fielder. Martinez and then Johnny Peralta to follow. In the air, center field, shallow, Wilkin Ramirez. And Prince is 0 for 3, 1 gone. Which brings us to our Ace Hardware Scott's fan poll question of the game. What is your favorite Tigers moment so far this season? Is it A, the Sanchez 17th strikeout performance against Atlanta? The one hitter last night, Cabrera's three homers in Texas, or D, the Pena collision in Seattle when he held on to the ball to win the game for the Tigers. Text ace, then a space, then A, B, C, or D to 37338. Lots of really good choices today. Make your selection. We easily could have put the Avila home run on that list as well. Yeah, that home run he hit in uh, Houston, wasn't it? Correct. It's flared in the air toward left center. And it's going to be caught by Willingham. Victor is out. Which one of those was your favorite moment? Uh, you know, the 17 strikeouts was impressive, but there's nothing like the potential and the excitement in a ballpark of a possible no hitter. So I'm going to go with that, even though he didn't get it. Place was electric. It really was. And, and there's, there's just nothing like it. What about you? I'm going to go with the three homer game only because I was sitting in the stands watching. And obviously we don't ever really get a chance to do anything like that. And but sitting there in the stands and when Miguel comes to the plate the. Entire ballpark I mean it's, it's just quiet. I mean that's. How it was that evening so I would go with that one but really you can't go wrong with it. Yeah. Nope. All worthy choices. One ball and one strike. 
0 for 2 in this game for Peralta. Driven to right field, hit pretty well. Parmalee going back, he's going to turn on it, and that ball is gone. Johnny doesn't usually reach the seats in that direction. Number five for Peralta. He is having some kind of year. Opposite field home run, a fastball tailing away from Peralta. What a really good swing, outstanding balance, real good bat speed. The home runs that have been hit to right field in this series, they're barely getting over that wall in right field. They are. That one clearly was a homer, unlike the Maurer home run earlier in the game. I mean, and Kelly's barely got over last night, too. Peralta hits number five, his 21st RBI. Three to two ball game now. Pena rips one off the glove of the first baseman Morneau. They probably get. Hit. They will probably give him a hit, but boy, it could very easily go as an air ball right at him. I know it was scalded, but did he lose it? Something happened. Maybe knuckled on him. I don't know. Looked like he jumped and he really didn't have to jump. So after getting the first two batters, the homer, and now the line drive off the bat of Pena. Tying run is on, and Fonte will be scrolling in. Rick Anderson will be chased off the mound by Andy Fletcher. Don't forget you can spend Memorial Day at Comerica Park and see the Tigers take on the Pirates. It's this Monday at 108. You'll enjoy the Super Spring Special. Upper box tickets are just $13. Call 866-66-TIGER. 13 bucks, that's it. The Buckos coming to town. Tigers play two at home here against Pittsburgh and then go to Pittsburgh for two. Tigers pitching staff. Uh, was incredible last year against Pittsburgh Pirates. Verlander racked up a ton of strikeouts, nearly a no hitter, correct? Was yeah, that last year. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah, but Harrison broke up the no hitter, right? And then Matt's had a ton of strikeouts against Pittsburgh too. Infante showing bunt bails out of there, 0 and 1. And with the way the Tiger pitching staff has been rolling up strikeouts this year, you would expect more of the same in that series. Infante sends a high fly ball to left. Willingham track. Oh, look out! A collision between Willingham and Wilkin Ramirez, who came out of nowhere. And Ramirez is a big boy, but he got the worst of that. Wow. Where's Wilkin going anyway? I don't know. Willingham's not a that's left field. Small guy either, but that's clearly the left fielder's ball. And Ramirez is still down on a violent collision in left center. So the out was recorded, and that's going to end the inning. We'll come back and check in on Wilkin Ramirez.
power. That is a good thing. He was just involved in a collision with Josh Willingham. Well, look how far he has to run to get this ball. Willingham in left field only takes a couple of steps, and he's there. And as a matter of fact, Willingham didn't even call the ball because he knew that it was going to be his all the way. Wow. That was a great shot to let you know how long he had to run to get there. That's the main reason why as a, an outfield coach uh, they try to get you to take your eye off the ball momentarily and then pick up where the other outfielder is because a lot of times when you have 35 40,000 people in the stands and they're all screaming you can't hear the other outfielder calling the ball anyway. So it's imperative that you as an outfielder get comfortable enough to at least take a peek at the other outfielder. How strong must Willingham be if Ramirez is running full speed and he runs into Willingham, but yet he's the one that laid down there for five minutes? Yeah, Willingham's a big boy himself, but you're right. Ramirez was running full throttle, and he was actually the one that caught the ball. Kind of reminds me of that play that when we were in Houston when the youngster Altuve uh, ran into their right fielder, and of course he had to leave the game with. Uh, what a semi French jaw is yeah, what it was well, called. That was a uh, big word. You don't remember. Subluxation. <laughs> <laughs> like how they pulled that out. He pulled it out too. Parcel dislocation. I, I called you out too. You remembered it. <laughs> well, fortunately, both are okay. And we remind you to join us again tomorrow when the Tigers wrap up their series with the Twins. And our coverage will begin at noon with Tigers Live tomorrow. It's Tigers and Twins right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Ramirez is listed at 62231 and he was running full speed into Willingham. So Fister now back to work with a couple of guys warming up behind him, Phil Coke and Luke Pakonan. Well, one more good inning out of Doug Fister and he might just put himself in line to get a win here. Gave up 3 early runs in this game in the first inning, but he has slowed down the Minnesota Twins to the point that the Tigers offense has kind of figured out Walters the last couple of innings. Tigers got one in the fifth, one in the sixth against B.J. Walters to make it a three to two game. Escobar, Florimone, and Carroll. Fisker's 2 0. 3 0 on the leadoff man, Escobar. That's in for a strike. Doug had a base on balls in the first inning, and that's the only one he's given up in this game. He's also hit a batter. And now an even 100 pitches. Bouncing ball foul. Three and two the count. Shadows have not become an issue yet, although you can see the shade starting to creep in. Down the first baseline, the 3 2 pitch is put on the ground a second. Fonte, it almost cost him, but he made the play. One gone here in the seventh. As long as you don't panic and then take a peek up to see where the base runner is, you can reach down with your bare hand and find it and still get the out. But where some infielders make their mistake is when they reach down for the ball. They look to see where the base runner is and then they don't pick it up cleanly and then that's what costs a lot of guys errors. Omar played that one nicely and yet another ground ball out for Fister. Nice job of uh, rebounding there after the 3 0 count by Doug. Laramon looks at a strike one and one. Shadows you can see starting to creep in a little bit. Hormone runs out of the batter's box two and one. And it's not been a good day for Pedro. He has struck out twice in this game. Two and two. Five strikeouts for Doug Fister in this contest. Now six. And Florimone just flips the bat down in disgust. 
two outs. That breaking ball has a lot of tilt to it. A lot of depth. And with the Fister curveball. Here's Jamie Carroll. When you played, would you have much rather faced a guy that threw mid 90s as opposed to what you see out of Fister? No doubt. You at least knew what you were going to get you know, the majority of the time. Fister's fastball moves all over the place. He cuts it, he sinks it. Four seam up in the strike zone. Good change up. Good arm speed on the change up and the breaking ball. There's the fastball, and the count now goes to two and one. Joe Mauer on deck. Jamie Carroll, 0 for 3. That's in the shallow center field. Kelly stretching out but can't get it. Carroll thought about it, but he'll hold up. That's a great effort there by Don Kelly. And the reason why you can dive there, no problem, is because you know your right fielder is going to be there. And ball not hit hard enough to get past Don Kelly, even though he didn't make contact with it. And there was Torrey Hunter. Might have nicked it. First time I've ever heard Joe Maurer get booed in this ballpark. They've been doing it all day to him, based on obviously largely on the uh, breaking up of the no hitter last night. It's an honor to get booed by these fans. <laughs> yes, it is. Joe ought to take it as a compliment. Three for three today, two singles. He homered in the first. He's pulling everything today, which is not the norm for him. Yeah, the home run went to the seats in right. It was just his third of the year. One and one on Maurer. One and two. Just got a piece. He'll stay alive as he rolls one back to Willingham on deck. Yeah, you might want to throw a fastball up in the zone, see if you can get Joe to chase one. He commands the strike zone pretty good, but he's all over that breaking ball that Fist was featuring. Maurer came into this game hitting 397 in the month of May, so he is well over 400 now with three hits. Unfortunately for Maurer and also more know who's also having a pretty good month. They're a lot of their offensive production hasn't translated into many wins for their team. Swing and a miss. Pena will have to run it down and flip it to first. Inning over. Seven strikeouts for Fister. Seventh inning stretch time.
Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by AT&T UVerse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. Back here in the Motor City on a sunny but slightly cool afternoon. Hey, how's it going? A lot of young Tigers fans here today enjoying Tigers baseball. Got a well side windows pitching change, and it looks like Brian Dunsing is on now. Hey, Dunsing going to try to slow down this Tigers offense. Tigers had started to figure out the Minnesota starter, P.J. Walters, the last couple of innings with uh, runs in the fifth and the sixth. Aaron Hicks has come on to play center field. Wilkin Ramirez out of the game. Avisail Garcia to pinch hit for Don Kelly. And Dunsing slides one in for a strike. Six innings out of P.J. Walters. They've got to be pretty happy with what they got out of him today. Quality start for the young man. Here's the 0 1. Big swing there by Garcia. It'll be followed by Dirks and then Hunter. If there has been a strength uh, to the pitching staff this year, it's been their bullpen. Their bullpen really has been. And not too bad this year. We get we talked about the starters. They've struggled, but the bullpen pretty good. Popped up to the grass in short right. Jamie Carroll and Garcia is out. One gone for Andy Dirks. Andy with a single and three at bats and a run score and he got the Tigers on the board scoring on the double by Hunter. A couple of innings to go in the fifth. Tiger box score. Pena two more hits today. Ball one to Dirks. Andy now four hits in the series, had three hits last night. Batting 268. Fouled straight back 1-1. One, one. Hunter waiting on deck. Andy came into this game batting 348 in the leadoff spot. Tigers still waiting the return of Austin Jackson, who's been out of action with a bad hamstring. And the Jim was talking about him a couple of days ago, saying we do not want Austin Jackson back until we know he is 100 or close to 100 percent. Austin Jackson was uh, on the field uh, yesterday before the game, and he started to uh, do some some exercise, moving around. He hadn't done much uh, since he left with that hamstring injury. Well, that's a good sign at least. Meanwhile, Dirks caught looking. And he, by the judging by the look on his face, does really not agree with that call. Two outs. And so get a pitching change here with Hunter coming up. We've got Cabrera behind him. So Dunsing gets the two men that uh, he will face in this game. Terry Steinbeck, the former catcher for the Minnesota Twins, the bench coach acting as the manager here today that Ron Gardenhire has been booted from this game. So Steinbach makes the call to the pen. They go to the pen. It's a wall side windows pitching change. We'll be back.
some of the sights and sounds to this one here this afternoon. We go to the bottom of the seventh. The Tigers batting with two outs, nobody on, and a pitching change has been made. And the new pitcher is on for the Minnesota Twins. Josh Renicky will take over. He had 328 uh, earned run average for Renicky on the season. Uh, holding right handers to a 185 batting average. That's outstanding. Lefty's really not all that much better at 229. Tory Hunter will stand in with two outs. Tory had a double to drive in a run in the fifth. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. Renicky, a native of Baltimore, Maryland. That's where he was born. He lives in Sarasota. Three two Tigers down by a run in the seventh. The 0 1. Well, Torrey has not had any luck at all against Renicky. Four punch outs. Yeah, Renicky's dad, uh, Gary, played on those really good Baltimore Orioles teams back in the day. Managed by Earl Weaver. Two balls, one strike. His uncle is Ron Renicky. I think his dad still scouts for Baltimore, as a matter of fact. Swing and a miss. Did you also know that his brother in law is Ian Desmond of the Washington Nationals? I did not know that. Neither did I until I just read it. Threw it right by Tony that time. Two balls, two strikes. Make it three and two. Cabrera waiting on deck if they can get it to him. And the three two. Driven to left field. Willingham coming on. And do it. Tigers go one, two, three. Seven in the books, and you're watching Tigers baseball today, presented by Bell Tire. Most complete game one hitters among active pitchers. Sanchez took over that lead last night with four of them. Yeah, some pretty good names on that list. Matt Kane of the Giants. You wouldn't think that Dickey would be on that list with that floater, uh, that knuckleball that he throws. Although those knuckleball knuckleballers can get on some rolls during starts, and apparently Dickey's done that three times. Luke Paconin is the new pitcher now for Detroit. And second, second tour of duty up here in the majors uh, for Luke Paconin this year. Uh, just recalled a few days ago. He's been in three games. He's won one. He hasn't lost. Six strikeouts in three and two thirds against two walks. 
good fastball, 97. About his top fastball, good breaking ball, and he's got that split fingered fastball he's gaining a lot of confidence in with each outing. Avisail Garcia takes over for Kelly in center. Middle of the lineup coming up for Minnesota here facing Paconan. Willingham Morneau. And then Calabello. Three, four, and five. And Paconan delivers a strike 0 and 1. Uh, the University of North Carolina, Paconan A. Tar Heel. He redshirted his freshman year after a rehabbing from Tommy John surgery at North Carolina. One ball and one strike on Josh Willingham, single and a walk in this game. Out in front of the breaking ball, one two. Tigers now have Jose Ortega joining Phil Cope. Here's the one two. Just missed the edge. One on one deck. Bouncing in. Three balls, two strikes. I've had several folks ask me how you actually pronounce Luke's last name. They have uh, suggested that I'm pronouncing it incorrectly and that you should pronounce the T. But I asked Luke the other day and he said, nope, it's Paconin. That's the way my parents have pronounced it. And he goes with Paconin. So will we. 3 2 is roll foul. <laughs> Has the pronunciation of your last name always been Allen? It has. Some fans try to tell you what to say, right? Well, sometimes they bring up good points, so I just double check with Luke and he said, no, it's Pukonen. <laughs> Not Pukonen or Putkinen or anything else. 3 2 pitch. Right back up the middle in the center. Lead off single. Hey, you can see the Tigers battle Andrew McCutcheon and the Pittsburgh Pirates this Tuesday at 708. Enjoy the Super Spring Special. Upper box tickets only $13. Call 866-66-TIGER. Here comes the skipper. Morno do next. Coke has been warming up. It's a one-run game, and so Baconan is out after one batter. Phil Coke will be coming in. We'll step aside. Another pitching change here at Comerica.
favor of the Twins. Joe Mauer's had a big day, three out of four, including a homer. More career hits against the Tigers than any other team. Torrey Hunter in RBI double, and Johnny has gone deep in this game, a solo shot. And now we've got a new pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. That would be the left-hander Phil Cope. And Jim was talking about uh, Phil Cope uh, yesterday in his office when he was meeting with the media, and he said that out of all the members of his bullpen, he's got to get Phil Cope going. He says he really hasn't used him uh, very much, and because some other guys have been doing the job down there, but he has to get Phil Cope going. He said. Well, he's going to face Morneau here, who is four for 18 career against him with a homer. And he deals a strike at 93 mile an hour fastball beautifully located. Morneau doubled in a run in the first inning. He's also bounced into a double play and grounded out. It'll get down the left field line back out of play. 0 oh and 2. Morno checking to make sure that his bat is not broken. Doesn't seem convinced. 306 batting average for Morno, but the power numbers down only two homers this year. Coke ready with the 0 2. Popped up back out of play. Series finale between these two teams happening tomorrow. Pelfrey and Scherzer will get together. That's lifted in the air. Shallow center field for Garcia. Javi makes the play, one gone. Coke gets a lefty out. There's Calabello. He recorded his first big league hit. A single back up the middle. Back in the sixth inning. One for eight now in his big league career. Ball one to Calabello. Tigers today have been out hit 9 8. They trail by a single run as well. Good outings by both starters, PJ Walters and Doug Fister. Doug gave up three runs in the first. But that was it through seven innings in this game. Swing and a miss. 1 1. And Phil Coates got a pretty good fastball here today. That last one at 93. And you won't get hurt to where he located that fastball. Off the end of the bat foul, one and two on Calabello. Rochester this year, Calabello hit 358. He played in 46 games in the minor leagues and knocked in 39 runs. He was tearing it up. It's hard to hit for that high average in that league, the International League. At the beginning of the season, it's really cold. Yeah. Ballparks and the grass is wet, damp. He was polling down there. Here's the one two. Two balls, two strikes. Hit 12 home runs too. Wow. All four pitches to Colabello have been away from him in the pitch sequence from Phil Coke. Stays away again. 
Three balls, two strikes. That's where Leland talks about when you try and mix and match late in games. You need left handers and get right handers out as well because Parmalee is waiting on deck. Well, the hope is Coke can get through the right hander here and then face another lefty. Don't think Willingham will be running here on a 3 2 pitch, one out. He is not. Swing and a miss. Calabello strikes out. Let's take a look at the pitches to Calabello. Every single one of them was away. That last one, a changeup at 83 and a dandy. So here is Parmalee with two away. Polk trying to maintain this one run deficit, give his team a chance. The shadows are an issue here for Parmalee, the pitcher in the sunlight, bad or not. On breaking balls, possibly, not on fastballs. It's a little bit difficult for hitters uh, when you are in the dark and the pitcher is in the light uh, to pick up the spin on the breaking ball, but really, guys don't have problems with the fastballs. Swing and a miss. That one was thrown by Parmalee, and it's 0 2. Every last fastball that Phil Coke has thrown here so far today has been at uh, 93 miles an hour. He's got a little bit more than that in his tank. The last year down the season, maybe postseason, had something to do with it, but he was 96 97 on a few of his fastballs. You wonder how much the postseason did have to do with that because certainly the, uh, the adrenaline is flowing a little bit more in the postseason, right? But he was cranking it up, and of course, he had the great playoff experience and playoff run for the Tigers. He's got Parmley set up for a real good breaking ball, but he's got to locate it because he's been able to throw fastballs by him. So if he does go breaking ball, he's got to get it down. That's exactly what Payne is asking for. Oh, he just missed the outside corner. Fastball that nearly threaded the needle. That's a good pitch. Two and two. But it just missed. Andy Fletcher right on that one. Here's the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Phil Coke stops off the mound. He got all three hitters that he faced. Meanwhile, the Tigers in the bottom of the eighth have the big boys coming up. Cabrera, Fielder, Martinez.
Bill Coke able to strike out two of the three that he faced. He got Calabello on a changeup, then he got Parmalee on a real good slide piece down and away. So nice outing by Phil Coke. Did his job. Now we'll see what the Tigers can do here offensively in the bottom of the eighth inning. They've got a new pitcher now. Jared Burton will take over for Minnesota. Well, he's a setup man, and he's got really good numbers. Nine holds so far this year, 249 earn run average. We also told you that Burton uh, does his best work against left-handed batters, even though he's a righty. It'll be Cabrera fielder Martinez in the bottom of the eighth down by a run. Miggy today with a single in three at bats. Ball one outside. How about this matchup? One for seven for Cabrera against Jared Burton. Yeah, that means that uh, Miggy is due. I like how you think. The 1 0. 1 1. He has swung and missed at about three or four different breaking balls today. He didn't hit that uh, breaking ball that Walters was featuring, and he also has swung and missed at that last one thrown by Burton. Another swing and a miss, one and two on Cabrera. Miguel had a single in the first inning. He's hit safely in 11 consecutive games. Well, here's where Miguel simply goes to that no stride approach where he won't pick that front foot up and just slightly lift the heel up and try to stay balanced to just uh, put the ball in play. Two and two. Well, that might have been just a, a show me fastball by Burton. A wanting to get back to the off speed pitch because Miguel hasn't had good swings at the off speed pitch and this had that. High towering fly ball to center. Hicks under it and Cabrera is out number one. Well, the new Miller Lite bottle coming soon to a bar near you. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. One big out recorded there by Burton. Now Prince Fielder. Lefties hitting 171 against Burton this year. Right handers 293. Because of that pitch right there, that change up. Circle change, nice fading action on that pitch. Ball down low, one ball, one strike. Burton was on the mound uh, a couple of nights ago when Prince Fielder got the game winning hit. And he deflected the ball. Uh, they got past the second baseman. It was Dozier on that night. And a winning run was able to come home. Swing and a miss again. Mm. I heard an interview uh, recently with Leo Mazzoni, the former pitching coach of the Atlanta Braves, and he used to say when we were. We with the Braves. We had a lefty that had a good changeup. We would hope that the opposing manager would pinch hit a right-handed batter against him late in games because we knew that changeup was so effective against right-handed batters. Yeah. And most of the time they would, and and he felt you know he was playing right in the hands of uh, Bobby Cox and myself. Well, Leo Mazzoni was the one that was able to convince Tom Glavin to start throwing his changeup to left-handed uh, batters, and when Glavin started to master that, uh, he started winning a lot of games. Ended up with 300. Bouncing ball back to the mound, and Burton will handle this one. Two up, two down. We'll bring up Victor Martinez. Victor, one for three, a single back in the second. Twins today have used Walters, Dunsing, Renicky, and Alberton here in the eighth.
foul back out of play. Here's why some feel that the save statistic is overrated, Rod, because you've got Burton coming in here in the eighth inning facing the meat of the lineup in Cabrera, Fielder, Martinez. And if he gets these three hitters, he'll hand it over to the closer in the ninth inning, and the closer gets the save if he does his job. Yeah, and uh, it's Burton doing the heavy lifting here. He still needs to get Martinez. And a strike called 0 and 2. He's gotten Cabrera to fly out, Fielder to bounce back to the mound. And the 0 2. Victor just got a piece of it. Tigers got one run in the fifth and one in the sixth after falling behind 3 0. Twins have not scored since getting three in the very first inning today. Regardless of what happens here today, the Tigers will not lose any ground uh, to the Cleveland Indians. They have lost their game in Boston. It's good news. Jim Leland's Tigers came into this one with a half game lead over Cleveland. Weren't the Tigers trailing the Indians two by two and a half games when they visited the Indians last week? They were. It changes quick. The 0 2. One ball, two strikes. Three runs, nine hits for Minnesota. Tigers, two runs, eight hits for playing in the bottom of the eighth. And Burton trying to get through the middle of the Detroit lineup. Should Martinez reach, Peralta would be next, and he is homer today. Bouncing ball back to the mound. Burton will knock it down, and the Tigers go one, two, three. So Burton comes out of the pen, does a nice job on a gorgeous day here in downtown Detroit. Right now it's 3 2 Twins. Here the Tigers are down by a run in Minnesota with three runs nine hits Tigers two runs eight hits. Troy tips back into that bullpen Phil Coke did a terrific job in the eighth and now Jose Ortega takes over in the ninth. And ninth time that Ortega has been on he's lost one game has not won a game couple of holds. Uh, eight strikeouts and eight in the third inning good fastball good breaking ball. Not many change ups from Ortega. Aaron Hicks will be the first man to face him. He took over defensively when Ramirez left the game after colliding with Josh Willingham. Bunted foul. 
Aaron Hicks already has one bunt uh, base hit in this series. Now that was a couple of nights ago. Attempting to do it again. Of the last 16 hits for Hicks, eight of them have been for extra bases, and four of them have been home runs. Waiting on the 0 1 from Ortega. And he pulls that one to second. Flagged there by Infante. Omar Infante, cool as a cucumber at second base. One out. Plays the game at one speed, never panicking. A little hot dog sometimes, too. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Every now and then it's okay. <laughs> I like it, though. I love his game. As long as you make the play. <laughs> Here's a ball high. Eduardo Escobar, 0 for 3. Now the 1 0. It'll get back into the seats. One ball, one strike. Escobar, two ground outs and a strikeout. Ortega getting an opportunity after putting up good numbers at Triple A. Here's the 1 1. Outside two and one. When he left uh, triple A he didn't have an earned run average. He had not been scored upon while he was. Playing for the mud hens. 14 scoreless. In Toledo. Innings that is. Two and one. Fly ball left field. Chasing Dirks back into the sunlight. Two outs. I want to remind you about Fox Sports One, America's new 24 hour sports network. Fox Sports One will be your home for great live sports, all the news and highlights you want, and shows and specials that only Fox could bring you. Fox Sports One coming August 17th. Two up, two down here. The Tiger bullpen doing a fine job in place of Doug Fister. Coke got three in a row. Ortega's gotten the first two men that he faces. And here is Pedro Florimon. Ball one. Tigers in the bottom of the ninth will have Peralta, Pena, Infante. Two and all the count. Strike call. Two and one on Florimon. Fisker struck out seven in his outing today. Allowing nothing after that three run first. Here's the 2 1. Which means another quality start by a Tiger starter this year. We've had quite a few of those. Making Jeff Jones very happy. Missed it inside. So it's full now, three and two, top of the order on deck, Jamie Carroll. Fouled away. Yeah. 
It's been a tough day for Florimani. He has fanned three times all three of those at bats against the starter, Fister. And again, the 3 2. Inside, he draws the base on balls. Two out walk for Minnesota. That'll keep the inning going now for Jamie Carroll. Carroll had a single back in the seventh. He is one for four. One of the nine Minnesota hits. Including today, the Tigers now have 29. Quality starts from their starters, which is first in the American League. Fister gave them another one today with three runs in seven innings of work. Verlander routinely does it. Scherzer's been great this year. Sanchez, great last night. Oh, look out, he threw it away. Florimone is on his way to second and beyond. He's coming to third, and they're going to stop in there. Two base throwing error. Now all of a sudden the twins have a chance to get an insurance run in here. Or take a charge for the air. Prince really had no shot at catching that ball thrown by. Ortega. And there was a slight thought that Florimo might be able to score, but they held him in third. And so now if Carroll comes through with a base hit, that would be a gargantuan run for Minnesota. Cabrera talking to an opposing player. You don't see that all that often, do you? That's a shocker. Oh, and two on Carroll. Swing and a miss. And none of the rest of that stuff matters. Ortega strikes out Carroll. They'll strand a runner at third, and we are headed to the bottom of the ninth inning. Tigers need one to tie, two to win. This afternoon, Bauer broke up the Sanchez no-hitter last night in the ninth, and he was off and running in the first. 
with a solo home run. Also, Morneau chipped in with a double. Armily with a single. They scored three off Fister in the very first inning. Tiger is able to get to P.J. Walters, the starter for Minnesota in the fifth. A double by Torrey Hunter and a solo shot by Peralta in the sixth. And that's where we stand right now, 3-2 in the favor of the Minnesota Twins bottom half of the ninth inning. Look who's in It's Glenn Perkins. He'll try and shut it down. Perk has eight saves this year. He has one blown save 345 earned run average. You can see he's got some power in that left arm 25 strikeouts in 15 and two thirds against just five walks. Johnny has not had a whole lot of success two for 14 against Perkins but he does have a homer and he's off to a tremendous start this year. Peralta homered in this game, a solo shot in the sixth. That made it three to two. Perkins deals a fastball strike one one. And not many uh, left handed closers in the major leagues. And the Perkins has had some really good stuff. Fastball gets up to 96, 97. Backed him out of there two and one. We we're talking last night about homegrown talent that the Twins draft out of the uh, Minnesota area and Perkins from St. Paul. They don't let him get out of there. Ryan Pena waiting on deck. Here's the two one. Peralta skies this one of the year. Foul ground. Morno on the run. Oh, tough play, and he made it to get Peralta. It was looking like uh, Morneau was really not going to have a shot at catching that ball, even though it's a playable ball, and he eventually made the play, but it just looked like he was struggling from the word go. Over the shoulder grab. And Peralta. Well, he's bumming. Yeah, he's a little upset because he got himself a pretty good fastball to hit there and a fastball friendly count, two and one. Strike called on Pena. Three nine and zero oh for Minnesota, two eight and one for Detroit. Perkins gets ahead, zero oh and two. Seventy appearances last year for Minnesota, sixteen saves. Scattered foul back into the seats. O2 it stays on Brian Pena. Another two hit effort today. Pena now is hit safely in his last six. Bouncing ball left side and a diving stop by Escobar, but no play. It's the second time in this series where the appears they play no doubles depth, no balls down the line, and that's a playable ball there for Escobar. But Payne gets himself an infield single. He was guarding the line, therefore not able to make the play. Meanwhile, the third hit of the game for Brian Pena. Tying run is on. Omar Infante facing Perkins. First meeting between these two. That'll get fouled down the first baseline. Four nineteen at home now for Infante. Two highest home averages wear Tiger uniform. You think Jim considered pinch running here? He may consider it. And he may wait until Pena possibly gets to second base. Oh and one. In the air right field. That's going to be playable for Parmalee. And there are two outs. 
Well, as soon as the game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live. You'll hear from Jim Leland, the Tigers skipper, plus the players who will break down the game, show you the highlights. Tigers Live immediately after this one from the Call Sam Studios here on Fox Sports Detroit. Tigers down to their last hitter now as Abisail Garcia stands in. He has seen Perkins twice and he is 0 for 2 against him. Fouled off 0 and 1. Should Garcia reach? On uh, obviously anything but a home run because that would end it. Tui Asasopo has moved to the on deck circuit. Garcia 0 for 1. Fouled out of play. No balls, two strikes. All the right handers have been tardy on the fastballs that uh, Perkins has thrown in this inning. They're right around 94 95, but Peralta, Infante, and now Garcia, all three, a little late on the heater. Strike three, and that's how this one ends tonight. Nice job out of the uh, bullpen for the Minnesota Twins today in the seventh, in the eighth, and the ninth. Yeah, they got it done. Burton ran right through the middle of the lineup in the eighth, and Perkins shuts her down in the ninth inning as Minnesota holds on to win this one over the Tigers. They snap a 10 game losing streak in the process. High fives for the Minnesota Twins. And your final score in this one, 3-2.